welcome to Backyard Bows. Hey, welcome to Backyard Bows. I'm Brandon. We got another APA bow up here. We got the Black Mamba 29. We did the Black Mamba 31 and we did the King Cobra DG uh, from APA. And after those two reviews, there are so many different features on these bows that are really cool, um, a little complicated, and I think some of them needed a little extra clarification. So, when I, so I went back through and I kind of wrote down all the comments and questions that you guys had regarding certain features on the bow, which we will touch on those a little bit more and I'll try to clear up some of that because all of the features on the bow are almost the same except the new bow winch down here, which is really cool. And we'll go over that as well. So I went with the new color rust that they had. I love the sandstone color that they had. I love the finishes on these bows. The specs on this one are obviously a little bit different. It's nice and compact. Um, and I think when we do these bow reviews, we factor in um, intention. You know, what was it intended for in a hunting aspect? Especially all of the features, everything is directed towards that backcountry bow. So if you have to get a hike eight miles in, you want a complete bow with everything on it where you don't have to have a lot of extra things to pack in um, and something that is convenient for you to either work on your bow or fix something if it goes wrong. And I think that's APA in a nutshell. And after talking to Nadal so much, uh, he clearly has such an inventing, in engineer mind, you know, just all of the new features that he adds onto his bows, you can just tell he's so excited about. And he designs everything himself, which is pretty cool. So let's go over the specs. You got 29 inches axle to axle, nice and compact. With these smaller cams, it's actually a overall bow, you know, uh, length is smaller than the CP28 from Bowtech. So it's really, really compact. And when you get this thing in full draw, which we'll show you, um, and it's all the way back, especially at my draw length of 30 inches. I mean, it is compact as you can get a, a compound bow, I feel like. You got a six and a quarter inch brace height, which is gonna bump up those speeds. So this thing, being a small bow, you get some pretty good speeds out of this thing. You got 40, 50, 60, and 70 pound options. As I mentioned in other reviews, <clears throat> the APA actually offers like an 80, 90, and 100 pound options, which are crazy, and that goes into those dual flex limbs. Uh, the ability to get up to those those draw weights. We actually did the the King Cobra DG at 80. Uh, you can watch that review, see what I thought. But I'm 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 way more in the 65, 70 pound range when it comes to draw weight. So this one has 24 out to 30 inches on the draw length. It is a set module, so you need a pre-order to your exact draw length. It comes in half inch increments all the way out to 30. Uh, so I'm on the tail end. I'm at 30 inches. This bow obviously is not designed. Uh, for a really, really long draw weight, I would suspect, you know, 28, maybe 29. I think Nadal said even 29 and a half to 30, there's a pretty big difference in how the bow feels and the stability of the bow. So remember that when I'm doing these reviews, I'm doing them at my specs, my draw weight. So if you're a 27 and a half draw length um, and I give a review on the bow, just remember I'm reviewing it, taking into consideration my specs my draw length, which it will feel drastically different, especially a compact bow like this. At 27 and a half drawing to 30, I'm sure it is night and day in how it feels. So remember that and make sure that you always go shoot a bow yourself. You got 80% let off. The other thing that I did add on to this bow that I had been so interested in, but I just hadn't ordered one was the Twister 360. So it's the in-house sight that APA makes, which is actually really cool. And we'll go over that as well. So let's start with the riser. Obviously these risers are super unique in their design. Uh, they have the most distinct look to them of any bow company, I feel like. You have this signature kind of front grip on it for carrying the bow. You got the fangs, which I love that, just so you can easily access kind of hooking it onto a, a bow limb or an actual just limb on a tree. Uh, inside of that fang, you got your mount for a camera. I would take a look at their website, their Instagram account. He has made a video series where he kind of details, goes over some of this stuff too, which is really cool. Uh, so if you go down to the bottom, they have their tool kit, which you can sharpen your blade. So this is probably one of my favorite parts about this. Bow. I didn't really touch on it too much the first time we did one of these. Um, but if you ever get in the field, I got a mule here where I skinned a couple of deers and, and it, it clearly was uh, not as sharp by the time I was done. Uh, probably got into some fur. But if you're ever in the field trying to, um, you know, gut a deer before you drag it out so you're not dragging as much weight and you have a dull knife, it is probably the worst situation. I can't stand a dull blade. So this one is kind of 
a li little duller than I'd like, so we'll see. Let's run it through here. They said this is for broadheads, but uh, you know we'll kind of put a blade through and see how it is. You can feel good contact, and you can see, you know, that it's getting something off the list. Yeah, I mean, I, you might have to run it through. I'd say usually a, sh a knife sharpener, you know, three times through, you can really see a difference. You know, you might have to run this through more than that, but I like that you can have that in the field, which is cool. You can adjust maybe a broad head, you can adjust your knock. Right behind the grip, you have a hole and a screw, and that allows you to put your wrist sling kind of through the riser, tighten it down instead of attaching it to the front uh, stabilizer. And then the new feature from this year, which is actually set into the riser, is the bow wrench. So there's a lock screw on the bow wrench as well, and you wanna undo it. He said don't undo it too much because it will unravel out of there quickly. You wanna keep a little tension on that screw, so maybe a quarter, tune, a quarter turn, you unlock it. It has a little hook on the other side, and here you go. You have a built-in bow winch to hoist your bow up the tree. And then also, uh, two things. So I've messed around with this a little bit. One, it has a little hook up here that you can slide it on, and that'll keep your bow straight up and down if you like pulling up your bow with the knocks away, okay? Um, and then when you're letting it down, you can let it down the other way where your broadheads are first, again, protecting those knocks. Two things, when you're raveling this back in, you wanna keep tension on one hand um, so that there's tension on the string because it's not going to be as tight. You know, If you just ravel it like this, it's not gonna be as compact and tight. And this bow winch barely fits inside this riser. But you wanna keep it a little bit of tension on that uh, as you're raveling it back in. So if you get into your tree stand, I would take beforehand, if you know, hey, I, I hunt usually at 18 foot. Okay, 16 to 18 foot. I would undo it all the way, measure out 18 foot. I take one of those silver Sharpies and I would put a little mark on that string so I know where to do it. So I'm not unraveling the bow winch all the way out every time up and down, okay? So when you're at the bottom of your tree, you unravel it all the way out until you see your marking, you tighten it back down, you hook that onto your belt or your loop, or then you can climb up and hoist your bow up. And then again, same when going down, don't just let the bow down. This thing does not have enough tension on it. Your bow will, the weight of your bow will just kind of smash into the ground. So you want to, again, unravel as much as you need, lock it back out, and then lower it down by your hands. But this is really cool. I love that. I've actually multiple times gotten to the base of my tree and realized, oh shit, I forgot my bow string. Uh, so it's nice to have things on here. So I understand the idea of that. You kind of have everything in a package where if you're in a hurry or you don't have as much time, you got everything on the bow that you need. Uh, Pretty cool stuff. So uh, there's two things that I love on this bow. One is this multi-position balancer back here. And if you've watched my videos, I'm not a big fan of a back bar stabilizer. I don't want anything hanging off of my bow. I hunt in a lot of tight places, climb into a lot of trees. So sometimes without being able to prep them, I don't like anything hanging off of my bow. I even like a short stabilizer. The reason I have this one on there is because it is so compact and full draw, I'm just trying to balance out this bow a little bit better. Um, but this one is so compact um, you can add weight to it, you can maneuver it forwards, backwards, left, right, and really kind of get the balancing of that bow. And it's so micro that sometimes even a larger sight can kind of add some counterbalancing to your bow. And this is perfect to just perfectly kind of balance the bow from left to right. I love that feature. Another feature, and this is kind of where the questions came in on the last review, is the micro tune. So you un undo your lock screw and there's an, there's an adjustment bolt on the bottom and if you turn it to the right, it will advance your bottom cam. And if you loosen it to the left, it will kind of let your cam go back. So again, you can get the timing on this bow without any tools or press almost perfectly in a matter of seconds. That's awesome. They also say that it will kind of help tune the bow. I, I don't see that as much as it just being a timing feature. So it's just something that can help you get the Bose cams timed perfectly, very easily and efficiently without any tools. I love that thing. Again, I'm skeptical of extra bolts and extra screws, so I would just say once you get your lock screw out, make sure that you tighten that thing back down just like anything and make sure that it's real nice and secure. Uh, and then going to the rest, you got the Twister 360 on here, which is one of their rest, in-house rests. So if you follow the string up to the top, it attaches to that torque-free limb anchor, which I've showed in other videos, but this one is actually attached. It goes down, there's a little spring here, and then this attaches to your riser so that there's no pull or <coughs> torque on your cables. 
everything's perfectly aligned with the center of the limbs. And as you draw back, it rotates forward. I love this rest. I, uh, it's something that I haven't seen too many people. I haven't seen it on very many bows. I think this rest is very well made. Um, everything with the rest positioning is you can do it yourself on the bow. So you take this little rod out of the back. This is actually your, your rod to get your cables and strings off, which we'll talk about in a second. That rod you can put right in here above the rest. It has a center line on it. There's a laser etched line engraved into the riser. So you can get your arrow and your rest set perfectly horizontally, laterally. Again, no tools. I love that you can do all this yourself. If you're somebody who likes to get stuff set up, I get these bows set up like that. I mean, it's just the easiest system to work with because everything is laid out for you. And in kind of in layman terms, if somebody's new to a bow, this would be very easy to kind of get everything dialed in very accurately. So also if you take that rod, and this was another question online. So somebody asked if you can really take the cables and the strings completely off. And yes, so if you repress your cable, you can slide that rod through the holes on the cam and it will allow you room to work your cables off and your string off if you do your string. So if you repress your cables, you can do your cables. If you if you draw your bowstring, you can do your string. You can take everything all the way off and change out in the field. So Nadal says, um, he always tells people, have an extra pair of str bowstrings and cables in your, in your backpack. And if something does happen, um, you can replace them. So then another question was, well, what if the string is completely off of the bow? Sometimes it gets unhinged. Sometimes the string breaks. Can you then use that to get your a new string and cables back on? And again, I haven't done this myself, but supposedly if you loosen out your, your limb bolts and there's a hole in the side, if you loosen them out almost all of the way, it will allow you, if you do your, if you do your string first, it will allow you to change your string and cables in case the string pops or derails itself. Okay, so ideally you would want to have everything on in case you needed to change your D loop. Um, or fix something on your string, or if it's partially torn, you can change it out, that's ideal. But if they do come all the way off, that still will also allow you to get new ones back on. So again, I could talk about this bow all day, but let's start shooting. We'll do our single shot assessment, and then we'll step outside and sling some. Again, I just wanna point out, each of these bow reviews, I take into consideration when we're doing the grading, uh, you know, the, the, the intent of the bow. So this bow was made for maybe a, a more compact, hunter uh, somebody with a shorter draw length okay 30 i'm on the top end so uh, i think it performs best around maybe 28 28 and a half even 29 even up to 30 that's a little long for this uh, it is so compact um, but then again if you're somebody who's hiking in you want something that is easily attached to your backpack something that's compact has everything in it i you know has everything included when you're in places where you don't have any resources i think this is a fantastic bow i think it is the ultimate backcountry bow you know i think that's their mission statement with these bows is uh you have everything you need when you need it and especially this black mamba 29 it's compact it's light if you got a long hike that's kind of what you're looking for um, but let's, our initial single shot assessment. So, uh, it, I mean, it's a stiff draw. You, you're going to tell that this thing is going to get those higher IBO speeds that they're claiming. You know, it says 355 on the IBO, so that's quick. I mean, that is, that's fast. And you can feel it in that draw. The other thing just from that one shot that I kind of remember back from those other two bows that I did from them is the hold. They want to creep on you. This one, especially because I'm in a long draw length and it's a short compact bow. The King Cobra, I had it at 80 pound limb. So that definitely wanted to creep on me. I think the best out of all three of them was that Black Mamba 31. That one's set up, I think the best. But this one being so compact, it, you know, even just with one shot, you can tell that you're putting a good amount of effort to keep it back. Uh, the draw cycle's nice and linear. I mean, it feels good, it's stiff, but it feels good. And then, yeah, you got a good amount of tension on the bow in full draw. Uh, so some people like a little bit more tension. Some people like a real, real heavy, I mean, a really, really big let off and uh, you kind of hold it lower weights. This one, man, I, I mean, you're holding, you're putting effort into the hold for sure. But uh, you, you got a little bit of vibration in your hand, which I expected. Uh, I, I, I want to see this one on the decibel because I think this one 
will vary a hair. Um, but for being a compact bow, I feel like I'm gonna be able to, to set up with this really nicely. I mean, it has a little bit of strenuous, uh, you know, strain to the stability because I'm having to put effort into holding it back. So uh, again, all of that will be magnified as we get out on the range. We will be able to see how consistent I'm gonna be with this right off of the bat. I haven't shot this at all outside. So, so we'll shoot a whole bunch and we'll give you those first shots on film. I love the rest though. This 360 twist, this Twister 360 is really cool. Um, that's the first time I've seen one of these in person. So that's something else I think is something to cool to look into, especially if you're going with your bows um, and just how they set everything up. It's pretty cool. Let's do one more. I would hate to let this thing back down. I feel like it would rip my shoulder out of socket. But let's go outside. Let's go shoot a whole bunch of shots and we'll come back in, give it that speed test, decibel reading, then we'll put a grade on it. All right, so on to the freestyle shoot. It's such a prettier day today. Uh, the last time when I did the VTM, there was like a layer of ice on here, and now I'm in a t-shirt in January. Um, but because of the weather, I'm gonna shoot this as much as I can. Now right here, we got a box elevated downward shots like you're in a tree stand. We'll go across, we'll shoot longer end shots from 20 to 50. We'll shoot everything a bunch of times all throughout the day. And we'll give you some of the first shots here on camera. So we'll go bore, which is at 30. You know, this is one of those bows where you can't really quick shot like I do sometimes. So sometimes I just kind of do a quick release. Don't put much energy, effort, you know, attention into kind of dialing those pins down. The bow, try, just see how the bow kind of settles for itself. Um, but with this, you really got to put some concentration into it. It's not just something you can throw up and feel comfortable releasing. You got my draw length of 30, makes that bowstring angle really acute with this bow being so compact. You know, it's all over the place with me. But again, that's, he, you know, he said even down to from 30 down to 29, it really makes a huge difference. So keep that in mind. I, I'm, I'm all the way at the top end. I could barely get my peep up anymore where I'm having to bend my head down just a little bit. So again, this bow's not made for the longest of draw lengths. It's, you know, designed for somebody uh, you know, with not as wide of a wingspan. Let's go the other buck. But if you put the concentration in, you know, it feels good coming off here. It just, it just wants to jump on you. I feel like you're straining so much, keeping it back. That's where you start. If you hold it too long, it starts to wobble. I'm kind of dreading doing that full draw stall. Uh, and occasionally, uh, you know, I don't look forward to a bow doing that. All right, now we'll go from 20 yards all the way up to 55 yard increments. I'll just place, try to place one good shot on each of these and then we'll shoot a couple at that elk up top. All right, so as we get out to the 40 yard black bear, that's probably where we'll start to see a little bit of that instability kind of magnify, you know, as you get farther and farther out. But we'll put some on 40 and 50. We'll go black bear. So more concentration to get them to dial down at 40 for sure. Again, that jump from 30 to 40 and then 40 up to 50, it's like, that's when, that's when that'll really start to come into effect. So three shots, you know, you kind of counter, counter, you know, kind of fix what you're doing wrong, fix how you're holding it, you know, and you can kind of adjust, but you know, that's definitely starting to see a little bit of, uh, let's do the full draw stall on Paddington. Let's see where this one goes. One minute. took all the effort in the world to get that shot where I just got it. Two different times, I think you might even be able to see, like 
it kind of pulled forward on me and you got to readjust my front shoulder felt that i mean it's just when a bow wants to creep on you it just when you got a you know a full draw stall type situation it is the worst situation in the field to be in you know if a bow wants to creep i mean that just it's strenuous all right up to the elk these are the first shots i will have put on that elk and you can tell i'm a little hesitant but we will see so elk up on top of the hill at 50. It's hard to feel good and tell about where this arrow is going. Again, let's see, third shot. Make some minor adjustments. You know, in the field, you only get one shot. You know, so again, you hear me say it every time. If you got this, but you would just have to put in some extra practice. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, and again, there's always gonna be somebody that comments on here, well, my, I got the 29, Black Mama 29, and it and it's, holds great for me. It's like, well, what's your draw length? Take that into consideration. I think that's a huge factor. So there's some good amount of torque on this bow and I'm physically having to counter a hair. That's a better one. So Black Mamba 29, it gets a 355 on the IBO, okay, which is fucking humming, okay. Uh, surprising to me when I read that online, just, just being such a small bow, I feel like that's super fast. but. That's what they claim. So 30 inches, 70 pounds, 80% uh, let off, and a 500 grain arrow. So a 300 spine, full metal jacket. Let's see. The calculator, punching the numbers online, calculator says right around 300 feet per second. See, that's 288. But uh, I, I, I honestly, I hate even talking about it. You get these guys that plug this, plug numbers in on this, you know, online calculator all day, and they swear by it. And then you got me who swears by that as you fluctuate that arrow weight, it does not compute the same every time from bow to bow. Uh, but you know, that's that's kind of what you get. I, I, I trust my in in-house experience and in actually getting my hands on the bows and doing my tests myself than to just plug it in on a computer and have it compute a number. Um, that's 290. Uh, again, I'm not complaining by any means. This is super fast. Uh, great speeds for this bow. Um, but I was thinking it would be closer to that 300 feet per second. Now I know when we drop this arrow weight to the 440 grains, it'll probably get over 300, but this is a duplicate, so that's 290. I would love to give it the nine out of 10, so hopefully it stays right around there. Let's do one more. That's 285. All right, last one, the tiebreaker. Is it going to stay in the 280s or 290s? We will see. That's 289. Man, so we're going to give it, unfortunately, an 8 out of 10. Uh, but either way, I think that that IBO could be a little inflated. Um, you know, and that's just my assessment here in-house. We, we tested the draw weight, it was at 70 pounds. Draw length is at 30. Uh, yeah, I measured both, so, you know, we just, I, I keep the same two arrows, 
that we use for the speed test right here on top of this buck. So we're using the exact same stuff every time and that's what it got. So right around 289, let's go ahead and shoot this other arrow. We got a 400 spine full metal jacket. This one is about 440 grains. It's gonna get well over 300. So that's 310. That's awesome. So a uh, little slower than I expected, but still great speeds all around. Let's turn around and we'll see how loud this thing is. So at the beginning, I was clearly hesitant to put anything in a review that I didn't think was a really accurate. So we've tested so many. I actually have an entire new one of these portable ones right here that supposedly got some really good reviews. And we kind of added that in the mix just to compare to everything else, make sure that this is accurate. Um, I still hold my opinion that bows do not vary very much with sound. Uh, you know, and that's on a decibel scale. Now to an animal does that, you know, does their senses intensify the slight difference that we get? I'm sure, but for the readings from the phone to the portable to this, I don't think, and we haven't seen yet, and again, we've only done a couple bows, but as we do more bows, maybe we'll start to see more separation from them, but there hasn't been much of a fluctuation uh, from bow to bow. So we'll do three shots, all the specs are the same, same arrow. So all of them have been right around that 90, 91, 92 mark. Ninety one point one. Yeah, they all are right around the same, right in those 90s. Uh, I'm just waiting for a bow to either be on the really quiet side, kind of maybe those mid 80s or, you know, pushing 100 decibels. But I don't think that's what we're going to see. All right, Black Mamba 29. And before I give this final grade, I'm gonna say, I think it's only fair that I put this bow in the field with a 33 axle to axle Black Mamba. So Black Mamba 33. I think that'll help my bowstring angle a little bit because these do seem to be a little bit jumpy, a little bit unstable at full draw uh, at my draw length. This one and the 31. So I think if I was to use one, I'd go to that 33 to kind of help even some of that out a little bit. And I think that would actually help me a lot. But we'll go, I wanted to give it the nine out of 10, but I think it fluctuated right under 290. So out of the five shots, it averaged in the 80s. So we gave it the eight out of 10 for the speed. I gave it an eight out of 10 for the quality. I think for the most part, the bow is pretty well put together. Um, I think after seeing so many different bows and the cams and mod systems, I think this, I'm gonna call it the timing system because I don't think it has much to do with the tuning, more of the timing of the cams. You know, that's something, if you lock the lock screw down, they say it's not supposed to move, but that's something that kind of has always been in the back of my mind. But I think the overall eight out of 10 for the quality, nine out of 10 for the appeal. I love the way these bows look. They're so unique. It's kind of like they just kind of, they went their own way. They did their own thing. They tried to go back to the drum board and come up with some something completely new, which I love. Uh, but I love their style. I love what they've done. I love how they've incorporated it all in a really sleek way. For the technology, for me, it's a 10 out of 10. You, can, you know, that's like the definition of APAs and their company and what they're doing. I mean, they're just those kind of minded people. They, they will keep thinking and keep pushing the limits. And uh, it's just a fun part of what they're doing. Uh, and if you like that kind of stuff, little gadgets and little, you know, things like this new winch. I mean, which I do, I love it all. Maybe these are the bows for you, but technology, you can't beat it out of the box. You don't need a single tool. You don't need a bow press. You don't need nothing. You could, I mean, every single thing you can do yourself with your hands. I love that. I mean, this is the one of a kind bow uh, in that aspect. And then for the performance, for me at my draw length, I probably would have gave it a six out of 10. I'm going to, to be fair, I'm going to give it a seven out of 10 kind of factoring in what this bow was made for and who it was made for um, and the intent uh, of, of, the, of the piece of equipment. So with that being said, I gave it a seven out of 10. Man, it was really hard to get that bow to dial down for me anywhere past 40. I really started seeing it move around. Up to there, I feel like I shot it fine. Um, and even as the day progressed, sometimes I can see myself getting better 
and better as the day goes on, but I got more tired and more sore from just having to hold in, you know, hold it full draw so tense. It never seemed to die down on me up to that elk. I mean, I shot like that almost all day on that elk. It just kind of was everywhere. Um, again, maybe the right amount of practice I could get better, but I think with a 33 inch axle to axle, I think it's going to be just perfect for me. So always take that into consideration when I'm doing these reviews. Uh, if you have a way different, way on the shorter side, uh, ax, I mean the draw length, or you shoot a way less poundage, just realize that you know the bow's gonna, same bow is gonna feel completely different from me to you. 42 times it by two. Add your two points for the for the price points. It's uh, in between a thousand and fifteen hundred, so it gets to make up for two. So 86 overall. Nice score for this bow. Um, Man, test drive one. They have that program where you can order it directly from the company, which I think is so cool. And I think we're going to start seeing more and more of that. But call APA up, give them all your specs, give them the color, give them everything you want, make your payment. They'll send you the bow. You have a certain amount of time to test drive it. See if you like it, see if it's meant for you. And if it's not, you can send it back. I think that's one of the coolest things out there that you can do with bows these days, uh, especially if you're in a location where you don't have the ability to go to a bow shop or a bow shop is not convenient for you. So, hey, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit that like button, leave us a comment. I love interaction. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We have so much more to come. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook for updates of anything else that we're gonna review. If there's something that you're interested in, hit those links below and check them out. And make sure no matter what your setup is, what bow you're shooting, get your reps in on the daily. We'll see you next week.